Hey friends, welcome to one of our weekly rev ups. You know, when I was a kid, one of the songs that we used to sing in chapel was this is the day the Lord has made. You remember the song? It was sort of a call and response. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it. You know, I used to sing this song as a kid. I really enjoyed it because there were hand motions. It was exciting. And we would just say, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. But you know, as I grew older, uh, this verse started to trouble me a little bit because I would find myself sometimes in difficult situations or very trying days. And I found it difficult to say, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And quite honestly, because there wasn't really anything good to rejoice about that happened during the day. I mean, imagine for a moment that you're driving down the road with a friend in the car and all of a sudden you get a flat tire, you pull off on the side of the road, your car starts smoking, you're trying to figure out everything that's going on. It's a terrible day and your friend says, hey, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You know, in some sense, it almost sounds like a, a blind optimism that regardless of what you're experiencing in life, just go ahead and be glad that this is the day the Lord has made. But here's what we're going to do for just a moment here. I want to help put this verse in context. This verse is Psalm 118, verse 24. But the first two verses that come right before it provide us with an important context for why this isn't a verse of blind optimism, but rather of informed optimism. In fact, here's what it says right before it. It says, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in his eyes. Now remember when Jesus came into the world, he referred to these very verses. He referred to himself as the stone that the builders rejected. In other words, that the teachers of the law, the religious leaders, they rejected him and his ultimate rejection came when they crucified him on a cross. But then it says, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Remember, Jesus was the cornerstone. In other words, when he rose from the dead on the third day, he united us all in him. And so what this verse is saying is the stone that the builders rejected, in other words, when Jesus died on the cross, has become the cornerstone. In other words, on the third day he rose from the dead, the Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in his eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You see, when we say this verse today, we're simply referring to today, but there's a much deeper meaning to this verse within the context that when we say this is the day the Lord has made, we are referring to a day 2,000 years ago when Jesus rose from the dead, he walked out of the grave, he gave us eternal life, forgiveness of sins, fullness of his grace, and therefore we can be informed of our optimism, not because we just blindly say this is the day the Lord has made, but we refer back to 2,000 years ago and say this is the day the Lord has made. Let us today rejoice and be glad in it. And so friends, I want to encourage you as you go into this weekend, the next time you say that verse, don't just say it in a sense of blind optimism. Instead, say it as informed optimism that we know and we have hope that because of what Jesus did 2,000 years ago when he walked out of that grave, we can have hope and assurance for today that regardless of what we experience in this life, regardless of the troubles that we have today, we can still rejoice because Jesus reigns in our life now and he will reign forevermore. Hey, as always, thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.